Hey guys, what's up? My name's Eva. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are new, welcome. I make videos to help you grow in your faith with God through His Word. And today, I am so excited to share with you guys um, a testimony of mine where God has healed my heart of a heart condition I had about a year and a half ago. And for those of you who are new here, I've seen a lot of new subscribers, so let me first just off First, start off by saying um, welcome. I am so thankful and grateful for each and every one of you. Um, if you watched my past video about like an update, I took just like a few weeks to myself. I was kind of going through a bit of a, a rough patch in terms of just not feeling motivated and um, my own things, but I so appreciate all the prayers, um, all the emails you guys have reached out to be praying for me. Like so so heartwarming and I'm I'm very thankful and so today um, I really wanted to film um, this video I mentioned in a few other videos that when I when I film these videos um, I always wait on God before I film um, that is why there was a stretch of like three weeks there where I was just like I really don't know what to film um, and these videos I I really cherish because I want them to be from God and I want to feel the Spirit so heavily when I film that I need to say or that I would hope to say everything that God wants me to say. And so a little backstory about how I came to this and then we'll dive in. Um, the past few weeks, you know, I think it's very normal in the Christian life and any life to just get very like discouraged sometimes. I felt like just very distant at times from God. I felt very um, like I wasn't worthy to be posting videos and I don't even know if I was hearing from him and like what am I supposed to talk about all these like attacks um obviously you know I know those voices weren't from God and I was um I feel a thousand times better in the sense where you know I just prayed about it and I really just waited and I told God like just give me some sort of idea <laughs> to film because I really just want to you know do your work and so weirdly enough these past few weeks um, long story short, I've been dealing with like a few health issues over the past few years, um, and nothing like completely serious or just things that like I would really love to like see healed. And so the past few weeks I've been feeling really discouraged in terms of healing. And then I woke up this morning and I was like, I had it on my heart so heavily to do a video about the time that God did heal my heart. Um, it was a testimony for a lot of my friends and family. Um, the church that I was going to at the time, my parents' church, actually asked me to speak about it. And so I've only shared this publicly once, um, and then this will be the second time. So <laughs> I just find it so ironic how, in a way, I've been like struggling these past few weeks in terms of really just um, being discouraged by some health stuff, but then God has put it on my heart today to film my testimony video about how he healed my heart just a year and a half prior. So it's just an amazing reminder for me. It shows me God's faithfulness, but I also really hope that this touches and inspires and encourages some of you guys to stay persistent in prayer um, and to always just turn to God um, because he is our provider and he is the ultimate healer. And so that was a bit of an introduction and a bit of a ramble, but I'm so happy you guys are here. And yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so I'm gonna just be, my videos are pretty like honest and um, very vulnerable, so I'm not gonna do any differently this time. I am looking at just like, because I have certain dates written down, so I don't wanna forget that. But long story short, I'm just gonna bring you guys through how this all came to be and um, where I am today because of it. Oh man, so let me like reverse back to, um, I think it was, when was it? It was um, July in 2019, so about a year and a half ago, um, I was going to a naturopath. I actually do still go to naturopaths just for, you know, like I just for other things like, I don't know, my hormone imbalances and I'm iron deficient, so stuff like that. And so I was living downtown at the time and in 2019, I actually moved to Spain in September. So this was before I moved to Spain. Um, I was getting ready. I was kind of stressed with like, you know, getting all my documents in order. Um, but otherwise, I'm a very healthy person. I've never had any health issues. Um, there's never been any sign of concern. 
So when I went to this naturopath who I was going to pretty routinely, um, one day in his office, he decided to check my heart. Um, he listened through a telescope. He also put on, I don't even know, like one of those, I don't even know, I'm not a doctor. One of those things to check my heartbeat and rhythm um, through like my finger. He did like another test. I guess he was just doing like a full workup exam and he showed some concern after. Um, he looked at me, my mom was there, and he was like, you know, Evangeline, like, has anyone actually done like a full exam on your heart? Because I just did like three tests and it, they all came back that um, you have an arrhythmia. So for those of you guys who don't know, an arrhythmia is basically an irregular heartbeat. Um, it's not that uncommon. I think a lot of people actually have it. It's just your heart doesn't beat at the right like pace. It's like off by a beat or two and whatnot but it does raise, raise some concern. So I thought it was in July and mind you, I was like a few months away from moving and I was like, oh gosh, like something else I have to deal with, like fine. So he actually decided to send me to um, a walk-in clinic that deals with ECGs. So they actually will hook you up to like a monitor and they did like, they do like a few tests to make sure everything's um, running properly, but you can only get a referral there. So I wasn't too worried, to be honest. I was like, okay, like an irregular heartbeat, whatever. Um, it was just kind of weird for me because honestly, I've gone through many routine checkups and I don't think like any doctors really like caught anything. So that was very strange for me. I was just like out of nowhere. Okay, so fast forward to when I went to the, um, the doctor. Um, I went for two ECG scans. So basically it's just like they lie you down on a table. They hooked up a bunch of monitors to like my chest and my back. Um, and I was there for probably like about like maybe like half an hour. They did two tests to run them both twice to double check. Um, I wasn't really too worried. I was like, whatever, like, you know, not a big deal. Where I got concerned was a week later, I got a call from, um, the nurse who was assessing me there. And she called me and she basically said, I need to come in and to sit down and talk to her about the results. I remember that week I was super busy at the time. Like I mentioned, I was living downtown. So I had my restaurant job. I was working in advertising. I was like, I don't have time for this. Like I'm getting ready to move. Like, can you just tell me over email or like, can we zoom? No, you need to come in. And I was like, why? And she's like, repeat it again. I just need to see you in the office and it's very important. And that is when I got like really concerned because I know, you know, unless it's really abnormal, a doctor is not going to want you to come in and sit down face to face with them. Um, so I actually called my mom and I was like, listen, I don't have a good feeling about what, like about what's going on. So can you please just like come with me? And my mom's like, obviously the most supportive woman ever. And she came with me and I'm just like having like flashbacks of how it all happened, but like we sat in her office and she had pulled up the chart on her screen. Um, and she, I honestly, she told me, she diagnosed me and then I don't remember like hardly any of the conversation after that. She basically said like, well, she did say that what she found, what both tests found, um, I actually have it here i like printed it to show you guys this was from this was on um oh my gosh july 2019 yeah so it was called a left anterior hemi block i'm gonna insert photos at the end of this video so you guys can see but what happened was this is like super irregular i remember after she said that like everything went black in my head i remember just crying a lot I would, mind you, I was already like a bit worried about like my move, moving to a foreign country. I was working a lot and um, it was just, I was already like, I don't know. It's just crazy to think about. But anyways, in that moment, I was very like, it was just a scary time because I, my head just went to like the worst possible outcome. I was like, oh my gosh, what if like I have a, heart, a serious heart condition? This sounds serious. Like, what if I can't even have a family? Like, what if I have to have a pacemaker? Like, it just started to go to the, the extreme. I was thinking like, oh my gosh, like what if I'm never be able to have a normal life? Like, all these horrible thoughts attacking me. And I was just, I didn't, I don't remember. She must have talked to my mom for like half an hour. I don't remember. 
Um, but I do know she said that what it what she found on both tests were not normal and it was something that needed to really be further assessed um, and she wanted to refer me as soon as possible to a cardiologist. So um, my mother and my father found one of the best cardiologists in Toronto. Um, we ended up going to him about three weeks later, but in between that time was a lot of darkness. Um, I ended up looking up like what a left anterior, anterior hemiblock was and um, basically it talks about some people needing pacemakers, that um, it, something that needs to be monitored or it could get worse because of the blockage. And this for me guys, like I was 25 years old at this time. I was like, what is going on? Like I'm a healthy individual. I go on jogs. Yeah, sure. I'm a bit tired, but maybe it's just from the iron deficiency. So it was something that just came on so like suddenly. Um, but it was weird because leading up to that, I actually did feel a lot more tired than normal. I don't know, whatever. So for me, I was like, okay, maybe this is just like a fluke. But the fact that they, they did it three times at the naturopath and then they tested me twice on different machines for the ECG, like it was confirmed five times that I had this heart condition. Um, and that's where I really started like freaking out. So during those three weeks, um, it was hard. I was super like in a hole. Um, I was crying a lot. And then I remembered that like, I just need to like give it to God. Um, my parents are parents of prayer. They are firm believers in Jesus Christ and they took it to their church. Um, so we had a, my parents' church praying for us. We had our family praying for, uh, for me, sorry. Um, and my, my friends praying for me. I was praying every day, um, <laughs> trying to at least day and night for like those three weeks before I saw the cardiologist. And I just wanna read these um, verses that I was meditating on to you guys, if you guys are going through something similar. So the first one was out of 1 Peter 5, 7, which is a verse that was so close to me during that time, but it is cast all your worries and anxieties on him because he cares for you. And the second one that I really meditated on was Isaiah 41, 10, which says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. So those are two that I like seriously just held so hard to during those three weeks. Um, it was something that was my like lifeline. God is always my lifeline. He is the one that I run to in times of trouble. He's the one that I praise when I'm happy. But during that time, it was, it was hard. I was like, oh my gosh, why is this happening right now? Like it was dark. Um, so fast forward to three weeks. My mom and I ended up going to the hospital in Toronto. Um, she took the day off work and she came with me and we were sitting in the waiting room that day. It was like six in the morning. And that day I had to do like four tests. They had me do a stress test where I ran on the treadmill. I did another ECG that lasted like a good 20 minutes. They were like going in, I don't know, they were like, they even did an ultrasound of like my back. They did like a whole workup. So the whole testing was probably about two, I would say almost two hours. Um, and so then after that, um, I had a break before I saw the cardiologist. So I came back out with my mom and we just prayed. We prayed before I did the test and we prayed like, you know, before I saw the cardiologist. We honestly, in the waiting room, just bowed our heads. I don't even know how many people were there. I was just like, <laughs> we bowed our heads in prayer and we just declared like healing. We said, like, God, we know you are the healer of healer and the doctors of doctors, Jesus Christ. Like, in your name, we just pray and we ask and we believe for healing. Um, and I don't know. I Over those three weeks, guys, like, my, I went from, like, a nervous wreck to finding peace. Um, even though I knew I had this, like, really big appointment coming up. In those three weeks, of course, I was nervous, but I also found so much rest in God. I was just at peace knowing, you know, God is still good no matter what. Um, and he is still so worthy of my praise. And so I was very expectant. I think that is something that um, I remind myself still now today that I was very expectant of being healed. That was a side rant, but going on back to that prayer, we prayed and then we went into the doctor's office. We sat there for about like 20 minutes before he came to see us. 
Oh, and I remember like so vividly, like I was sitting on the doctor's bed. My mom was sitting on the chair and the cardiologist walks in. He introduces himself. He starts going over all my past medical history. He starts going over everything that the previous charts had said. And then he <laughs> um, was basically, I have like both of the charts printed out to show you guys at the end of the video. Side by side, he must have been sitting there for about like a minute in silence, just looking at the charts. Um, and he goes, okay, Evangeline, like I've looked over, you know, like I mentioned your past medical history. I see what the past results have said from three weeks ago, but he goes, um, after all your workups and all your tests, I can confirm that your heart is like completely healthy and it's normal and there's no sign of a blockage. And in that moment, like I, my mom and I didn't even need to say a word. We literally like, I'm gonna start crying. Oh, we literally like looked at each other and we just started like crying because guys, this is how I know that God is real. Like, sorry for like, this is so vulnerable, but there is so much power in prayer and there's so much power in the name of Jesus Christ, guys. Like we serve a God who is living and active. When he tells us in these scriptures that he spoke 2000 years ago, it says that he is still the same yesterday, today and forever. And so this for me, because obviously like I am going through health things now and they're not like as serious as this. They're just like things that I wish to see healed, right? And this, the fact that this came to my mind today is such a testimony to me. As much as these videos are for you, this is all for God's glory. And it's also, it also helps me as I film to remember how faithful God has been. But I don't know if this is gonna be reversed. It basically says normal rhythm um, and everything's, everything's fine. Whereas the one prior, Diagnosis as sinus brachycardia and left anterior hemiblock. So you can see the difference in the two charts where, you know, the first one has a lot more dips and the other one's a lot more stable. So I also want to read this letter that he wrote to the, um, the doctors sending a letter back after I did my exam there. And he basically said, dear doctors, Thank you for referring Evangeline to us for the cardiac assessment with an abnormal ECG, which was done at your clinic. The ECG had reported clearly as left anterior hemiblock and she was referred to us. She was accompanied by her mother today. Then he just talked about like my whole like medical history. She works with a naturopath who thought there was an abnormal, oh my gosh, a normality in her heartbeat and sent her to the clinic to get an ECG done, which did confirm, like I mentioned, abnormalities. Um, and then it just goes on like how I don't smoke, how I occasionally drink alcohol. And then it goes on to just like all my past medical history. But then he says here, her ECG done at the clinic was clearly very different from the ECG I saw today. Um, it showed, uh, sorry, there it showed left axis deviation, which was not seen today on today's ECG. I wonder if this was a lead placement. And then he just goes on um, again to say, surprisingly, her axis was normal. Um, no block was noticed. I believe her ECG today was normal. And again, I wonder if there was a lead placement issue. In any case, her mother was very concerned and so was she. However, after listening and doing many tests, I didn't hear any murmurs or um, normalities. I did explain the ECG finding they both felt assured. Um, and then he just like thanks them and stuff. But like, guys, what the heck? Like, I'm, <laughs> it's just crazy. Like, oh, I'm still so like, whenever I think about this time in my life, I'm just like, what a crazy, amazing testimony um, to God for God's glory. Um, I just want to also read this verse for you to help you guys understand that everything in Romans eleven thirty six 36, it says this, for of him and through him and unto him are all things, to him be the glory forever and ever, amen. So as much as God has healed me and as much as he may be blessing you and healing you, this is all for him and through him and unto him. This is why I feel so, honestly, like this is why I needed to share this. 
this is why God placed it on my heart because this is all for his glory. It is not for mine. I know I'm not special. I'm not, you know, well, we're all special in Christ, but I mean like I'm not better than anyone else that I received this healing. This is only for the testimony of Jesus Christ and the glory that all goes back to him. Um, and so like, I remember when the doctor was showing me like the things he was like, his excuse was, I remember, so sorry, rewind after my mom and I found out we were crying because we knew it was Jesus. Like we were just sobbing and he was like, he didn't know what to say. He was basically like dumbfounded, obviously. He was like, well, I think maybe, you know, there was like, he said like a lead placement or something was misled. He said, you know, eventually and sometimes the doctors could put on like the ECGs in the wrong way. And I'm like, seriously, five times you're telling me that it comes back abnormal and all five times confirmed I have a block and now today there's nothing like I do not believe that wholeheartedly a hundred percent God is a healer and so to him I basically just said like doctor I'm sorry but I just think that's not true I said we're people of faith we believe in Jesus Christ and I was healed and then he just like smirked at me and he's like I'm happy for you so I mean like oh man it like of course makes me emotional and I just want to like this video is for obviously for God but it's also for anyone right now who's going through what I'm going through right now again I'm going through some health stuff I just want you guys to remember how faithful God is um he is a God who listens he's a God who hears us in our afflictions he's a God who has healed the dead back to life I mean he is able to do all if he is the one who has created the heavens and the earth and Jesus Christ can heal you in any situation you're in nothing is too impossible for God I was reading in Exodus the other day about Abraham and uh, Sarah um, and Abraham basically laughed at God he's like what do you mean I'm about to bear a child like I'm almost 100 years old and he God like said back to him he's like is anything too impossible for God and I just want to remind you guys of that um, that it's not and that's a reminder to myself too because obviously living in a world where we just everything is so instant we want instant gratification we want um, things to just be delivered so quickly guys you know these afflictions I have found have brought me a lot closer to Jesus Christ um, if it wasn't for hard times how would our faith ever ever be strengthened and so I also want to share one more verse out of Colossians. This is one that I read a few days ago. And it says this. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that everything in him, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. So, yeah, guys, I just, that for me when I read that, it was, it's just such a reminder. We serve the king of kings. We don't serve a God who, you know, just sits up there and like watches us deal with our afflictions and our hardships and he listens to our prayers. You know, and it does say in James that the um, effective prayer of a righteous person produces much. And so, guys, we need to be reverent in prayer. We need to constantly be praying. We need to constantly be praising. If we're worrying about something, guys, we should be turning that into worship. I am preaching to myself right now because um, it's been a hard few weeks. But the fact that this came to my mind today is not a coincidence. God has placed this on my heart um, to remind me of how faithful he is, but to also encourage you guys, if you need healing in any area of your life, it doesn't have to be health. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it's restoration within a family member. Um, maybe it's healing from addiction. Like whatever it is, don't stop praying. Um, we should never stop praying. We should never cease praying. We should keep praying until something happens, um, and, until we hear something so clearly. Um, and so this is just like for encouragement for both, for everyone watching this, but also like I mentioned for myself and, um, I actually kept these under my bed, um, because I was just so blown away that day. Um, and so. God does these things not just for us. Of course, he gives blessings and all that to those who are his children, 
but well, like we dress red in Colossians, everything is for him. And so when you're healed, it's for him. And when you're delivered, it's for him. And when you're brought out of anxiety and depression, it is for him. Um, and so I encourage you, if you have a testimony to share, if you've been healed, I would love to hear it in the comments below. Share your story. It is all for God's glory. Um, and yeah, that is today's video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this. Um, and I know that was kind of like, maybe I went through that a bit too fast, but I mean, I that's basically what happened. Um, and I'm so, so thankful. And I'm thankful for each and every one of you guys who have uh, been here the past few months, who've been sending me comments and messages and you guys, um, just the sweetest things ever. And so, yes, I would also always, I always think it's important to end in prayer. Prayer is super powerful. So whether you need healing today, um, if anything, we can pray in agreement um, that God will deliver and that he will hear us. He's always listening. And so I would love to pray for you guys. So let's pray together. Dear Jesus, um, we are so thankful, God, that you are a God who listens. God, you are living and active, Jesus. We know that by your wounds and by your stripes that we are healed, God. You give us salvation, which is the greatest gift of all, God. You give us redemption of our sins, God. And so we are just so thankful for the constant cleansing and sanctification that you put us through. Jesus, I just first and foremost thank every single I think I thank you for every single person watching this video right now, God, that they are here on purpose, that I just pray whatever I spoke, God, that they would just take the words um, that they really need, God, that you would place that and embed that on their hearts, that they would be changed and transformed, God, that they would leave today just a little bit more encouraged and a little bit more hopeful for whatever situation they're in. Jesus, we are just so thankful that you are God who is above all. Um, no matter our circumstances, that we can look to you and that you will lead us through the valley, that you do not leave us there, God. You do not leave us in darkness, but you give us hope for eternity. You give us hope for um, just amazing promises you have for us, Jesus. And so I just pray that myself and everyone watching would just stay persistent in prayer, God, that we would not give up, we would not be shaken, that we would just stand firm in faith and continue seeking you. Um, and we just pray today for deliverance. I pray for deliverance for people dealing with addictions. I pray for deliverance um, for people dealing with family issues, God, that there would be restoration in families. I pray for any health and sickness, God, that that would just be cleansed, God, and that you would just make us new. And so we just love you. We lift up your name. In Jesus' name, amen.